Hi, my name is Ken Bishop, Director of Sales Engineering here at Interface Inc. and I'm here to show you how to get started using your DIG USB output module. Before we do, I'd like to point out some of its key features. One is it works with a variety of millivolt per volt force and torque transducers. It's easy to use and install. Purchase includes configuration, calibration, and logging software, and it can capture up to 500 samples per second. First, we'll download the software. You can either get it from the stick disk that's supplied, or we can get it from our website. You go to www.interfaceforce.com, go to the product page for DIG USB, as shown on the screen, and then you go to the icon that says software. You need to be logged in to do this action. Double click on the software, and as you can see over in this corner, it's automatically downloading. Now what it's going to do is it's going to put some files here that will need to be extracted once it's completed. So I click down below. Here's the files and we're going to pick the, f the uh, file name that says DSC USB Toolkit Setup EXE. Double click on it and then double click on Extract All. Let it map to the direction or the location that it would like it to go and hit extract. Now it's extracted all the files. Now we're going to go ahead and first double click on the driver setup. Run it. Shouldn't take too long. Authorize it to continue. Follow the commands on the screen. Make sure that we agree to the terms. Let it map to the location it wants to go to just by clicking next and next and install and next and then finish. The next one we're going to do is the DSC USB toolkit setup and this is for the DIG USB. We'll double click, click run, authorize, click next accept the agreement. You would want to read it, of course. Click Next. Let it map to the location it, it's already uh, designed to go to. Hit Next for DSC USB Toolkit and create the icon. Hit Next and install. As you can see, the files are being installed onto your computer. Finish. And of course, there's no module detected because we have not plugged it in yet. So that's good news. That's what we're expecting to see. Now I'm going to close all the folders, minimize the website, and there is our desktop icon ready for us to use. After your software is successfully loaded onto the PC, now we can connect the hardware. First, we're going to start with the USB to micro USB cable. We're going to plug the USB side into the PC and then the micro USB side we're going to plug it into the DIG USB module. We're going to wait until the hardware successfully installs onto the computer. This should be automatic. Next we will connect the load cell to the DIG USB. Notice that the DIG USB has a 9 pin D type connector female. So you'll need a 9 pin D-type connector male installed onto your load cell. We connect the two together and now the hardware is connected. Now we're going to open the DIG USB DSC USB toolkit and we're going to see the output. Now, if your unit was purchased with an interface calibration, you should be able to do a quick check verify. And you will be verifying the calibration. And once you do that, you should be good to go. We're going to do that right now. So 500 gram weight or 1.1 pounds. And we're good to go. For those of you who purchased the unit and did not have an interface calibration, we're going to show you two different methods that you can use.
to do a calibrate on this unit. One is going to be a live calibration where we use an actual weight to do the cal. The second one will be one where we actually just use the information from the calibration cert to perform a calibration. So on the first method, the live cal, we're going to go into the calibration icon, looks like a weight, and click the button. Now we're into this menu. And it's showing on one side the millivolt per volt input that's coming from our load cell. On the right side here, it's showing the last calibration it had, which was in this case calibrated in grams force. For this particular calibration, we're going to calibrate it in um, pounds force. So we're going to uh, first go in and, and change the uh, unit. And we're going to change that to um, pounds force. So we click on the units tab and change this by clicking on the gram force and putting in LBF pounds force. Click OK. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is change the format. So we want to, in this case, show an extra decimal because uh, 500 grams is about 1.1 pounds. So we'll want to see that next decimal. So when we go to the format, we hit this drop down button and pick 0.0. .0. That gives us one decimal point to the right of um, the uh, ones number. I click OK and that activates it. Next we're going to actually perform the calibration. This will be a two point cal, so we're going to hit this button called calibration and then make sure we're on the tab that says auto cal. Our first point will be zero, which we'll acquire with no load on the load cell. And our second point will be, and we're going to type that in right now, as I stated before, 1.1 pounds. Once I click OK, it's ready now to do the live cal. So make sure the table is nice and stable and the scale is unloaded and hit acquire. Once it's acquired that, it goes dark and it's ready for the next cal point. The next cal point is to load our 500 gram or 1.1 pound load cell, or excuse me, weight onto the load cell. Then I click the calibrate button and it says calibration has been completed. We click the OK button. Now we can remove the weight. Now we're going to go back to the home location where the picture of the house is. The serial number of the unit should be showing. And then we're going to click on it and then click connect. That takes us back to the large screen that we were showing at the beginning. And now we can run a test to make sure that when we load our 1.1 pound weight onto the scale that we get that reading. We'll do that right now. There we go. We've calibrated it and we verified it. You're now good to go. Now we're going to start with calibration method number two, which is using the calibration cert that was received from interface for the load cell. First, we go to the calibration icon. And then we want to make sure that we set the unit correctly. In this case, we're going to use LBF. But if we needed a different one, we could just click on it here and type in the new unit. And then we want to set the format. In this case, we're going to use this uh, one decimal place to the right. Um, but if you needed other ones, you could go here and select a different one. And then click OK. And now we're going to move to the calibration tab. And in this case, we're going to use the table cal instead of the auto cal. Click on that. This calibration type requires four different entries. Uh, the first line will be for, in this case, we're going to calibrate two points. Zero is one point. And then the second point will be a millivolt per volt output that matches the, um, the value on our calibration cert. So since we want point one to be zero, it'll be zero millivolts per volt at showing zero pounds force. So pounds force would be the value 
entry. And we could click in here to change the value if we wanted to. For our second point, this will be the value that's on our cert. So for our calibration test, this will equal 0 0.24. So that's 0 0.24 millivolts per volt. And that equals 1.1 pounds. I'm typing those values in and hitting OK. And as you can see, all the values are displayed. We double check and make sure they're correct. And all we do now is hit calibrate. It says calibration has been complete. Click OK. And now we're just going to go and verify that this calibration was uh, correctly performed. I'm going to hit the home button, select the serial number, and connect. Make sure it's reading zero on the screen. And I'm going to apply the weight. And if I get 1.1, then we have a successful calibration. We do, and now you're good to go. Thank you for joining us, and enjoy your interface DIG USB output module. If you require further support, please contact an applications engineer.